As World War raged in Europe from 1914, President Woodrow Wilson took full control of foreign policy, declaring neutrality but warning Germany that resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare against American ships supplying goods to Allied nations would mean war. Germany decided to take the risk and try to win by cutting off supplies to Britain through the sinking of ships such as the RMS Lusitania. The U.S. declared war in April 1917 mainly from the threat of the Zimmerman telegram. 143. American money, food, and munitions arrived quickly, but troops had to be drafted and trained. By summer 1918 American soldiers under General John J. Pershing's American Expeditionary Forces arrived at the rate of 10,000 day, while Germany was unable to replace its losses. 144. Dissent against the war was suppressed by the Sedition Act of 1918 and AMD. Espionage Act of 1917, German language, leftist and AMD. Pacifist publications were suppressed, and over 2,000 were imprisoned for speaking out against the war. The political prisoners were later released by U.S. President Warren G. Harding. 145. The result was Allied victory in November 1918. President Wilson demanded. Germany deposed the Kaiser and accept his terms in the famed 14-point speech. Wilson dominated the 1919 Paris Peace Conference but Germany was treated harshly by the Allies in the Treaty of Versailles, 1919, as Wilson put all his hopes in the new League of Nations. Wilson refused to compromise with Senate Republicans over the issue of congressional power to declare war, and the Senate rejected the treaty and the League. 146, Roaring Twenties Main Article History of the United States, 1918-1945, Further Information, Roaring Twenties and Causes of the Great Depression Prohibition Agents Destroying Barrels of Alcohol in Chicago, 1921 In the 1920s the U.S. grew steadily in stature as an economic and military world power. The United States Senate did not ratify the Treaty of Versailles imposed by its allies on the defeated Central Powers. Instead, the United States chose to pursue unilateralism. 147. The aftershock of Russia's October Revolution resulted in real fears of communism in the United States, leading to Red Scare and the deportation of aliens considered subversive. Slash money supply decreased a lot between Black Tuesday and the bank holiday in March 1933 when there were massive bank runs across the United States while public health facilities grew rapidly in the Progressive Era and hospitals and medical schools were modernized. 148. The nation in 1918 lost 675,000 lives to the Spanish flu pandemic. 149. In 1920, the manufacture, sale, import and export of alcohol were prohibited by the 18th Amendment, Prohibition. The result was that in cities illegal alcohol became big business, largely controlled by, racketeers. The second Ku Klux Klan grew rapidly in 1922-25, then collapsed. Immigration laws were passed to strictly limit the number of new entries. The 1920s were called the Roaring Twenties due to the great economic prosperity during this period. Jazz became popular among the younger generation, and thus the decade was also called the Jazz Age The Great Depression, 1929-1939, and the New Deal, 1933-1936 were decisive moments in American political, economic, and social history that reshaped the nation. 150. Great Depression, and the New Deal Main Articles, Great Depression in the United States and New Deal See also, Good Neighbor Policy Dorothea Lange's Migrant Mother depicts destitute pea pickers in California, centering on Florence Owens Thompson, mother of seven, age 32, in Napomo, California, March 1936 during the 1920s. The nation enjoyed widespread prosperity, albeit with weakness in agriculture. Financial bubble was fueled by an inflated stock market, which later led to the stock market crash on October 29, 1929. 151. This, along with many other, economic factors, triggered worldwide depression known as the Great Depression. During this time, the United States experienced deflation as prices fell, Unemployment soared from 3% in 1929 to 25% in 1933, farm prices fell by half, and manufacturing output plunged by one-third. President Franklin Roosevelt engaged in radio fireside chats as means with regularly communicating with the public, this was innovative for the time. 
During the first visit of sitting U.S. President to Brazil, 1936 Brazilian President Getúlio Vargas, left, and U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, right, in 1936 and 1932, Democratic presidential nominee Franklin D. Roosevelt promised New Deal for the American people, coining the enduring label for his domestic policies. The result was a series of permanent reform programs including relief for the unemployed, assistance for the elderly, jobs for young men, social security, unemployment insurance, public housing, bankruptcy insurance, farm subsidies, and regulation of financial securities. State governments added new programs as well, and introduced the sales tax to pay for them. Ideologically the revolution established modern liberalism in the United States and kept the Democrats in power in Washington almost continuously for three decades thanks to the New Deal coalition of ethnic whites, blacks, blue-collar workers, labor unions, and white Southerners. It provided relief to the long-term unemployed through numerous programs, such as the Works Progress Administration, WPA, and for young men, the Civilian Conservation Corps. Large-scale spending projects designed to provide private sector construction jobs and rebuild the infrastructure were under the purview of the Public Works Administration. The Second New Deal was turned to the left in 1935-36, building up labor unions through the Wagner Act. Unions became powerful element of the merging New Deal coalition, which won re-election for Roosevelt in 1936, 1940, and 1944 by mobilizing union members blue-collar workers, relief recipients, big city machines, ethnic, and religious groups, especially Catholics and Jews, and the White South, along with blacks in the North, where they could vote. Roosevelt seriously weakened his second term by failed effort to pack the Supreme Court, which had been center, of conservative resistance to his programs. Most of the relief programs were dropped after 1938 in the 1940s when the conservatives regained power in Congress through the Conservative Coalition. Of special importance is the Social Security program, begun in 1935. The economy basically recovered by 1936, but had sharp, short recession in 1937-38. Long-term unemployment, however, remained problem until it was solved by wartime spending. 152 in an effort to denounce past U.S. interventionism and subdue any subsequent fears of Latin Americans, Roosevelt announced on March 4, 1933, during his inaugural address, in the field of world policy, would dedicate this nation to the policy of the good neighbor, the neighbor who resolutely respects himself and, because he does so, respects the rights of others, the neighbor who respects his obligations and respects the sanctity of his agreements in and with world of neighbors. 153 in order to create friendly relationship between the United States and Central as well as South American countries, Roosevelt sought to stray from asserting military force in the region. 154. This position was affirmed by Cordell Hull, Roosevelt's Secretary of State at Conference of American States in Montevideo in December 1933 World War II. Further information, World War II, Military History of the United States During World War II and United States home front during World War II the Japanese crippled American naval power with the attack on Pearl Harbor, destroying many battleships. In the Depression years, the United States remained focused on domestic concerns while democracy declined across the world and many countries fell under the control of dictators. Imperial Japan asserted dominance in East Asia and in the Pacific. Nazi Germany and fascist Italy militarized and threatened conquests while Britain and France attempted appeasement to avert another war in Europe. U.S. legislation in the Neutrality Act sought to avoid foreign conflicts. However, policy clashed with increasing anti-Nazi feelings following the German invasion of Poland in September 1939 that started World War II. Roosevelt positioned the U.S. as the arsenal of democracy, pledging full-scale financial and munitions support for the Allies, but no military, personnel. 155. This was carried out through the Lend-Lease Agreements. Japan tried to neutralize America's power in the Pacific by attacking Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, which catalyzed American support to enter the war. 156. The main contributions of the U.S. to the Allied war effort comprise money, industrial output, food, petroleum, technological innovation, and, especially 1944-45, military personnel. 
much of the focus in Washington was maximizing the economic output of the nation. The overall result was dramatic increase in GDP, the export of vast quantities of supplies to the Allies and to American forces overseas, the end of unemployment, and rise in civilian consumption even at 40% of the GDP went to the war effort. This was achieved by tens of millions of workers moving from low productivity occupations to high efficiency jobs, improvements in productivity through better technology and management, and the move into the active labor force of students, retired people, housewives, and the unemployed, and an increase in hours worked. President Roosevelt's infamy speech in aftermath of Pearl Harbor attack. Congress, consequently declared war on the Empire of Japan into the jaws of death. The Normandy landings began the Allied march toward Germany from the west. It was exhausting. Leisure activities declined sharply. People tolerated the extra work because of patriotism, the pay, and the confidence that it was only for the duration, and life would return to normal as soon as the war was won. Most durable goods became unavailable, and meat, clothing, and gasoline were tightly rationed. In industrial areas housing was in short supply as people doubled up and lived in, cramped quarters. Prices and wages were controlled, and Americans saved high portion of their incomes, which led to renewed growth after the war instead of return to depression. 157, 158, American corpses sprawled on the beach of Tarawa, November 1943 The Allies, the United States, Britain, and the Soviet Union, China, as well as Poland, Canada and other countries, fought the Axis powers of Germany, Italy, and Japan. The Allies saw Germany as the main threat and gave highest priority to Europe. The U.S. dominated the war against Japan and stopped Japanese expansion in the Pacific in 1942. After losing Pearl Harbor and in the Philippines to the Japanese, and drawing the Battle of the Coral Sea, May 1942, the American Navy inflicted decisive blow at Midway, June 1942. American ground forces assisted in the North African campaign that eventually concluded with the collapse of Mussolini's fascist government in 1943, as Italy switched to the Allied side. More significant European front was opened on D-Day, June 6, 1944, in which American and Allied forces invaded Nazi-occupied France from Britain, slash on the home front. Mobilization of the U.S. economy was managed by Roosevelt's War Production Board. The wartime production boom led to full employment, wiping out this vestige of the Great Depression. Indeed, labor shortages encouraged industry to look for new sources of workers, finding new roles for women and blacks. 159, a Japanese-American unfurled this banner the day after the Pearl Harbor attack. This Dorothea Lang photograph was taken in March 1942 just prior to the men's interment. However, the fervor also inspired anti-Japanese sentiment, leading to interment of Japanese Americans. 160. This was taken under the directive of President Roosevelt, who signed Executive Order 9066. The terms of this executive order resulted in some 120,000 people of Japanese descent living in the U.S. removed from their homes and placed in internment camps. Two-thirds of those in turn were American citizens and half of them were children. Those who were as little as 1-16 Japanese, 161, and orphaned infants with one drop of Japanese blood were placed in internment camps. 162. The U.S. Supreme Court held the Japanese-American internment camps to be constitutional in 6-3 decision in Korematsu v. United States Supreme Court case. 163. The Trinity test of the Manhattan Project was the first detonation of nuclear weapon, which led Oppenheimer to recall verses from the Hindu scripture Bhagavad Gita, notably being, and become death, the destroyer of worlds. Research and development took flight as well, best seen in the Manhattan Project, secret effort to harness nuclear fission to produce highly destructive atomic bombs. 164. From 1942 to 1946, the project was under the direction of Major General Leslie Groves of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Nuclear physicist G. Robert Oppenheimer was the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory that designed the actual bombs. The first nuclear device ever detonated was an implosion-type bomb at the Trinity Test, conducted at New Mexico's Alamogordo Bombing and Gunnery Range on July 16, 1945. 165 
the Allies pushed the Germans out of France but faced an unexpected counterattack at the Battle of the Bulge in December. The final German effort failed, and, as Allied armies in East and West were converging on Berlin, the Nazis hurriedly tried to kill the last remaining Jews. The Western Front stopped short, leaving Berlin to the Soviets as the Nazi regime formally capitulated in May 1945, ending the war in Europe. 166, over in the Pacific, the U.S. implemented an island-hopping strategy toward Tokyo, establishing airfields for bombing runs against mainland Japan from the Mariana Islands and achieving hard-fought victories at Iwo Jima and Okinawa in 1945. 167, bloodied at Okinawa, the U.S. prepared to invade Japan's home islands when B-29s dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki forcing the empire's surrender in matter of days and thus ending World War II. 168, the U.S. occupied Japan, and part of Germany, sending Douglas MacArthur to restructure the Japanese economy and political system along American lines. 169, during the war, Roosevelt coined the term four powers to refer four major allies of World War II, the United States, the United Kingdom, the Soviet Union and China which later became the foundation of the United Nations Security Council. 170, excerpt of U.S. President Harry Truman's speech regarding the nuclear attack on Hiroshima, Japan captions provided though the nation lost more than 400,000 military personnel, 171, the mainland prospered untouched by the devastation of war that inflicted heavy toll on Europe and Asia participation in post-war foreign affairs marked the end of predominant American isolationism. The awesome threat of nuclear weapons inspired both optimism and fear. Nuclear weapons were never used after 1945, as both sides drew back from the brink and long peace characterized the Cold War years, starting with the Truman Doctrine on May 22, 1947. There were, however, regional wars in Korea and Vietnam. 172, The Cold War Main Articles, History of the United States, 1945-1964 History of the United States, 1964-1980, and United States in the 1950s Cuban Missile Crisis U2 Reconnaissance Photograph of Cuba, showing Soviet nuclear missiles, their transports and tents for fueling and maintenance. Following World War II, the United States emerged as one of the two dominant superpowers, the USSR being the other. The U.S. Senate on bipartisan vote approved U.S. participation in the United Nations, UN, which marked turn away from the traditional isolationism of the U.S. and toward increased international involvement. The primary American goal of 1945-1948 was to rescue Europe from the devastation of World War II and to contain the expansion of communism, represented by the Soviet Union. U.S. foreign policy during the Cold War was built around the support of Western Europe and Japan along with the policy of containment, stopping the spread of communism. The U.S. joined the wars in Korea and Vietnam and toppled left-wing governments in the Third World to try to stop its spread. 173, the Truman Doctrine of 1947 provided military and economic aid to Greece and Turkey to counteract the threat of communist expansion in the Balkans. In 1948, the United States replaced piecemeal financial aid programs with Comprehensive Marshall Plan, which pumped money into the economy of Western Europe and remove trade barriers, while modernizing the managerial practices of businesses and governments. 174, President Kennedy's Civil Rights Address, June 11, 1963 The plan's $13 billion budget was in, the context of U.S. GDP of $258 billion in 1948 and was in addition to the $12 billion in American aid given to Europe between the end of the war and the start of the Marshall Plan. Soviet head of state Joseph Stalin prevented his satellite states from participating, and from that point on, Eastern Europe, with inefficient centralized economies, fell further and further behind Western Europe in terms of economic development and prosperity. In 1949, the United States, rejecting the long-standing policy of no military alliances in peacetime, formed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, alliance, which continues into the 21st century. In response the Soviets formed the Warsaw Pact of Communist States, leading to the Iron Curtain. 174, in August 1949 the Soviets tested their first nuclear weapon, 
thereby escalating the risk of warfare. The threat of mutually assured destruction however, prevented both powers from nuclear war, and resulted in proxy wars, especially in Korea and Vietnam, in which the two sides did not directly confront each other. 172 Eisenhower Button from the 1952 Campaign President John Kennedy Address on the Cuban Missile Crisis President Dwight Eisenhower, elected in landslide as the first Republican president since 1932, had lasting impact on American life and politics. 175 He ended the Korean War, and avoided any other major conflict. He cut military spending by reliance on very high technology, such as nuclear weapons carried by long-range bombers and intercontinental missiles. He gave strong support to the NATO alliance, and built other alliances along similar lines, but they never were especially effective. After Stalin died in 1953 he worked to obtain friendlier relationships with the Soviet Union. At home he ended McCarthyism, expanded the social security program and presided over decade of bipartisan comedy. He promoted civil rights cautiously, and sent in the army when trouble threatened over racial integration in Little Rock, Arkansas. 176. The unexpected leapfrogging of American technology by the Soviets in 1957 with Sputnik, the first Earth satellite, began the space race, won in 1969 by the Americans as Apollo 11 landed astronauts on the moon. The angst about the weaknesses of American education led to large-scale federal support for science education and research. 177. In the decades after World War II, the United States became global influence in economic, political, military, cultural, and technological affairs. In 1960, the charismatic John F. Kennedy was elected as the first and, thus far, only Roman Catholic president. The Kennedy clan brought new life and vigor to the atmosphere of the White House. His time in office was marked by such notable events as the acceleration of the United States' role in the space race, escalation of the American role in the Vietnam War, the Bay of Pigs, invasion, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the jailing of Martin Luther King, Jr. during the Birmingham Campaign. Kennedy was assassinated on November 22, 1963, leaving the nation in profound shock. 178. Climax of Liberalism American Soldiers During the Vietnam War 1967 The climax of liberalism came in the mid-1960s with the success of President Lyndon B. Johnson, 1963-1969, in securing congressional passage of his Great Society programs. 179 They included civil rights, the end of legal segregation, Medicare, extension of welfare, federal aid to education at all levels, subsidies for the arts and humanities, environmental activism, and series of programs designed to wipe out poverty. 180, 181, as recent historians have explained, gradually, liberal intellectuals crafted new vision for achieving economic and social justice. The liberalism of the early 1960s contained no hint of radicalism, little disposition to revive New Deal era crusades against concentrated economic power, and no intention to redistribute wealth or restructure existing institutions. Internationally it was strongly anti-communist. It aimed to defend the free world, to encourage economic growth at home, and to ensure that the resulting plenty was fairly distributed. Their agenda much influenced by Keynesian economic theory envisioned massive public expenditure that would speed economic growth, thus providing the public resources to fund larger welfare, housing, health, and educational programs. 182 Sound of Apollo 11 and its landing on the moon Buzz Aldrin, Schoen, and Neil Armstrong became the first people to walk on the moon during NASA's 1969 Apollo 11 mission Johnson was rewarded with an electoral landslide in 1964 against conservative Barry Goldwater, which broke the decades-long control of Congress by the conservative coalition. However, the Republicans bounced back in 1966 and elected Richard Nixon in 1968. Nixon largely continued the New Deal and Great Society programs he inherited. Conservative reaction would come with the election of Ronald Reagan in 1980. 183. Meanwhile, the American people completed great migration from farms into the cities and experienced period of sustained economic expansion.